Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at building a class in our C sharp.net program we have open here. We're going to be building our library management system. And with that, let's get started. So the first thing we want to do rather than dropping all our code inside these forms which was fine for most of what we we're doing. Now is a good opportunity to start using more functionality that's built in. So we're going to build a class that is outside of one of these forms. The code will be outside the forms. This is going to be our book class. Uh, same namespace and this is going to be the structure this is going to be very similar to like a list in respect that it's gonna have lots of functionality built into it we're gonna be able to use this book in a variety of different ways uh, so we're gonna make it public so that it's accessible throughout my program and the first thing we want to do is kind of define what this book is going to be and the type of information that it's going to store and how it's going to be useful to us in the future. So let's first look at what the book is going to store. Uh, this first one might not make the most sense, but I'll explain what it's doing. ID is just going to be what our database is using. So we'll get back to that, but that's just our way of quickly looking up the book when we need to. Uh, the more familiar elements, we're going to have a book with a title, it's going to have an author, it's going to have that genre that we did in a previous application. And then the, the big one that it's going to have is, I have a typo here title, author, public, and then we're going to use the enum for the genre like we did previously. Have trouble typing here. And then the last thing we're going to build in for now is determining whether the book is available. This is a library, so people check out books. Now we're just going to assume that they're physical copies, although I think libraries now let you check out digital copies and they have a limited amount somehow. But we're just going to assume that there's a limited amount of books like a typical library would do and we're going to store that information. And this will be the shell of the data that this book is going to store and there's a lot of added convenience using a class like this to store information right we're going to be able to pull from the database eventually and populate this information into a very nice little container and then we can read from it modify it work with it so that's it's the structure that is going to allow us to work with our form very easily. We'll be able to use our button calls inside our form very easily without having to work with lots of code. And by creating this generalized system and compartmentalizing it, it's going to make uh, building, building more, another typo here, building more code in the future much easier and much more maintainable. So these are some of the properties that we're going to add. Uh, now I'm going to use get and set fields to define how we can update these pieces of information. For the ID, we're going to let the database define this and we're only going to be able to get the information. For all the other variables, we are going to do a mix of get and set. Set means that we can update the variable with this with this class. 
all of these should be able to be modified within the class. So I think it makes sense to apply them as get and set. Uh, for is available, we're going to make setting it private, meaning that you need to use this book class to change. Actually, meaning you have to use the functions that we're going to make, the methods that we're going to make to update this variable here. Uh, and let's add the enum real quick because we have this red underline. I'm just going to copy and paste the enum here. I've gone over it in previous code. So feel free to watch those old videos if you'd like to see uh, more about enums. Next, we're going to take a look at the constructor. So this is the code that runs immediately when someone builds a book. This will be the code that runs right away. So we're just going to first create an empty constructor and basically do nothing with it. I have put it outside of my code for some reason. There we go. Uh, empty constructor. So you can create a book and not populate any of these fields. We can create a book and not populate any of these fields if you want. Uh, but now let's take a look at overloading the constructor, which means we will allow a user to also build a book and put parameters inside when they build the book. This will make a little more sense when we start using the code, but more or less, hopefully what I'm saying makes sense. So we're going to, oh, let me use lowercase. We're going to allow a person to automatically set these values up front when they're using the code. Now we are updating our class variables. You saw that this, when I click over this, you can see the highlight in green there. That's, that's what's going to get updated here. Uh, sometimes you can do this, although I'm pretty sure this is obsolete now. You don't need to do that anymore. Uh, in other programming languages, that's required, though. But it's obsolete. Name can be simplified, so you don't need to do this. Or C sharp. Book genre is going to be genre. And is available will be true. I think because we have private set, if they build an empty book, we should probably say is available is true just by default because otherwise that field will be empty. And Maybe it's fine, but now we're going to build two methods. So we have that private set for is available. And this will be kind of our main function, uh, main functionality in our program is, hey, is the book available or not available, right? It's a library. We want to check out books. Reserve book. And scoping if is available then so we're going to have a button we're going to have a we already have a button on our form here a reserve book so we're going to add that functionality inside our class here that way our form is really clean right we don't have to write all this code inside the form and you don't have to rewrite it if you want to reuse it later on in the application. That's where the power of this object-oriented programming comes from. And then return the book, because we have a button for that already. And that means the book becomes available. So this is all we need for now to just go over a basic class. Now let's use the class. Um, I'm try to speed up to keep us within a good amount of time here. Uh, let's see. Uh, the first thing we want to do here, we're going to double click these buttons as well. 
did that create my form load? Okay, cool. It's just not going over there when I click on it. Yeah, I want... Let me delete this and then... It's not auto-populating all of the nice information that would typically come with it. It's okay. We'll build it ourselves. So now we got the we're gonna create these buttons. And it's giving me a problem here. Fix that real quick. Okay, that worked. We got our return button click. So let's put the code in here. So I want to show two different things really quick. Actually, we're going to break this up into another video. So uh, in our next video, we're going to use the book class. So we've defined it here, and then we're going to then use the book class in our button clicks. So just a quick review of what we've done here. We have created these properties. This is the information that the book class is going to store. We have two constructors. One's overloading the other. Uh, because they have different parameters, we're allowed to reuse the constructor. The constructor is the code that runs right away when the the book is made, when you create this book class. And then we have these uh, class methods that you can run. And this will update the is available feature here of the, of the book. Uh, I feel like this should probably be a, a, a private variable, but maybe, maybe not. So other than that, this is... Um, this is everything that we're going to work with in the book class right now. So this is a good introduction of some of the fundamentals of object-oriented programming. Um, that's all for this video, though. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.